So one of the questions that comes up a lot is how to use the gates in coaching. And actually, you know, I think this is the most important question or one of the most important questions to ask when we are talking about coaching and human design or quantum human design. It's too easy if we just coach by type or just coach by authority to start to label people. And even though, of course, that's an, a giant and really important part of information that you want to be understanding about your clients, we have a tendency to kind of use type, strategy, and authority as a labeling system. And that actually kind of puts our clients back into a box. The gates, the gates are really like the facet of a diamond, right? You're Type and strategy and authority is sort of the raw carbon or the, the you know, when you get, you dig the mine, you mine the diamond out of the earth, it's sort of raw and it's, it's, you know what it is, but it, you don't really know the potential of it fully, right? It's not been cut. It's not been polished. The gates really put the polish and the cut on the diamond. And it's really in the gates that you start to figure out what drives a client, what motivates a client. What do you need to do to really address some of the core drivers and motivations that your client might be grappling with? In addition to that, one of the things we look at in quantum human design is we look at the underlying archetypes that have to be fulfilled, we call those the nine resiliency keys, for someone to really live out the fullest expression of their chart, and in particular, the fullest expression of their gates. But, and here's, here's some quick, just short, short hacks. Number one, Understanding the gates gives you a really good understanding of somebody's life purpose and their soul purpose. And you can start to really go through the chart, through the lens of the gates and see where might there be gates that are creating a learning challenge or a growth potential or are catalytic in catapulting your clients to really expanding on the fullest expression of who they are. If you want to learn more about the gates and start looking at you know, how does my client's conscious son impact what drives them and what motivates them and what they're here to give and what they're here to do? You know, I would certainly first encourage you to explore learning more about human design and the gates. That's actually something we talk about in quantum human design level three. You can also get a couple of resources that we have. So these are the quantum human design activation cards. They are available on Amazon. They come with a little guidebook. They have, they, they lay out actually all the gates and the guidebook goes into, it tells you a lot about the drivers and the motivations and the core archetypes associated with each of the gates. There are a lot of different ways I use these with my clients. One of the things that I do if my client feels stuck is I actually have them literally like draw a card, like almost like you would use a tarot deck, right? So I'll have them draw a card and actually have them journal about the relevancy of whatever the theme is that comes up. I'll also, of course, use it as you can use it and you can use the guidebook. And there's, by the way, there's a bigger version of this guidebook on Amazon too. So if you are like me and you need really big fonts because your eyes have seen a lot over the course of the journey of your life, um, there's a bigger version of this guidebook too. But, I, you know, I will, um, you know, use this as a tool sometimes just to explore what are the themes and the drivers of a, of a chart. So if I look at a chart and I see, oh, the sun is highlighting the gate 29, I can look at the gate 29 in the guidebook. And that's going to tell me a lot about that position, that astrological position and that gate and how that might impact someone. So for example, if you know that somebody has the sun in the gate 29, you know that that's a person that's going to have a really hard time saying no. And if their self-worth is wobbly, setting boundaries is going to be really tricky for someone with that configuration. And that's probably part of their soul curriculum, something they have to learn in this lifetime uh, in order for them to really fulfill the full potential of who they are. So, um, you know, that is certainly uh, using the cards or the Gates guidebook, the Encyclopedia of Quantum Human Design. Those are great tools to help you get a cursory overview of your clients. But the truth is, you know, you're probably, you know, to really learn how to use it in a deeply integrated approach, you might want to really study quantum human design. You know, there's, it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to really know how to work with it and apply it. So um, that, that would be my encouragement. I hope that gave you a little bit of thoughts around why are the gates so important? And most importantly, I mean, here's where I just want to end. Don't, don't use human design as a labeling tool. Don't label your clients. Use it as a map to help them explore how they can best engage with the world 
to bring out and fulfill the highest potential of who they are.